boys. So they meet again. Round one happened right here in Lima as the locos swept the Mariners at home. Now the defending champs head south to Salina for round two. The Mariners are currently on a two-game skid and are looking to snap a four-game losing streak to the locos. Top third, locos on top, two nothing. Tyler Anshaw decides he's going to make the lead a little larger, cranking a solo shot over the right center fence. Three nothing locos. Same inning, Braden Doty sends a base hit up the middle. John Previzera zooms around third and makes his way home. Four nothing Lima. Moving to the bottom of the seventh, Mariners still trailing by four. Chris Myers doubles down the right field line. Justin Diaz scores. The Mariners drawing within three, but Lima keeps things just out of reach. OG grad Brad Croy singles up the middle. Anthony Amicangelo comes on home. The Locos earn the road win tonight, seven to three. It is day two of the double elimination Acme District tournaments. Van Wert and Crestview playing winner go home ball. Scoreless in the top of the second. Brant Richardson towing the rubber for the Knights, freezing a Cougar at, at the plate with a man on first, but the next batter avenges his teammate. Lennon Bartley snaps a grounder through the infield. Nate Tipple will be waved on home as he rounds third. Van Wert draws first blood, and they want more in the next inning. Owen Treese grounds one over the third baseman's head. Lawson Blackmore will make it home from second. Cougars take a 2-0 lead, and in the fifth, they tack on a few insurance runs. Jackson Amweg hits a bloop single into shallow left center, dropping just in front of the outfielder. Treese trots on in. Van Wert wins 7-3. So the Cougars will take on the losing team between this WBL matchup, Elida battling with Shawnee. On the mound is Dalton Miller throwing some gas, but Elida's bats get to working after the strikeout. Luke Berger singles up the middle. Gunnar Kuhn losing some equipment as he heads home, but he can get that after he touches the dish. Elida goes up 1-0. Next man up is TJ Whipple, and he patiently watches the pitch go wild. Berger's in from third. It's 2-0 Bulldogs, and then Jaden Hollinger joins the hitting party. Smacking one into left field. Whipple hustles on in from second. Elida taking the range early on, but here comes Shawnee in the top of the third. Jaron Bertke sends a chopper towards second. Kale Ebling is going to beat the tag at home. Indians take the lead 4-3, and in the fifth, it's Bertke coming up clutch again. This time going deep to center field. Garrett Shaw strolls in from third. Indians now ahead by three, and Jake Cowan follows it up by hitting a tricky grounder through the infield. Bertke will go on home. Shawnee will play the winner of Elida and Van Wert on Monday. The Bulldogs and Cougars will battle tomorrow at one. In Coldwater, the Cavaliers act squad and St. Henry come off Friday wins looking to advance to Monday's championship game. Top first St. Henry gets going. Mark Seafrink sends a base hit to left center. Dalen Froning is able to score capping a two run inning to start the game for the Redskins. Bottom third still two nothing. Coldwater starts to claw back in. Noah Miller hits that ball into right. Ross Weagle scores from third. Cavaliers within a run. Later in the inning Jacob winning knocks his own single into right. Austin Reithman comes home. We have a tie ball game but it doesn't stay that way. Miles Blazing game grounds one to third. That one can can't be scooped up, so Miller scores to put Coldwater on top 3-2, and they add on to it in the fifth. Miller skies one well to right center. The outfielder tries lining up the catch, but misses. Reithman tags from second and turns on the Jets. Coldwater advances to the championship game, winning 5-2. So St. Henry gets the winner of Fort Loramie and Minster tomorrow at 1. Bottom first, no score. Redskins strike first. Jake Sanders delivers a single to right. Nathan Ratterman makes a break for home. Just out of reach of the tag, 2-0 Fort Loramie. Top second, Minster looking to cut into the lead. Alex Schmidtmeyer knocks one to right center, and that ball has some legs. Dylan Sharp gets the green light to round third for home. He scores, followed by a hustling A.J. Heitkamp from first. Minster ties the game, but it's Lormu who comes out on top. Ratterman with the cat-like reflexes at first. The Fort wins 7-6. Big league ball. The Indians take on the Yankees in game three of their four-game series. Trailing by three out of the gate, but that changes with a big swing from Jose Ramirez. J-Ram leaving the yard for the 29th time this season, Indians on the board. Then in the sixth, Brandon Geyer has a pair of ducks on the pond. A sharp shot sent to the third baseman. Michael Brantley scores. Geyer is safe, and Ramirez comes on in as well. The Tribe tying things up, but they give up an inside-the-park home run off an air to Andrew Romine. The Indians lose by that run 5-4. to four. The Reds have won three of their last four and look to take the series against the Cardinals. After a three-hour rain delay, the Reds heat up. Seventh inning, bases loaded, game tied at two. Scooter Jeanette rips from the right, bringing in Billy Hamilton. Cincinnati takes their first lead, and they never looked back. A. Eugenio Suarez capitalizes. The Reds go on to win 8-2. The Tigers have dug themselves in a rut once again as Detroit has lost their last five. Already facing a seven-run deficit, top of the six, James McCann rips one down the third baseline, going all the way to the corner. That double is good enough to send Nick Castellanos around the bags to score. But that's the only run the Tigers could produce. Detroit drops their sixth straight and get to face their old pitcher, Justin Verlander 
start tomorrow. As we step off the mound, when we come back, we take a quick dip in the pool and hit the tennis courts. See the action right after this quick timeout. Welcome back. The summer swim season is so quick that if you blink, you just might miss it. Today is the final day of the Western Ohio Aquatic League Championships. We start the day in the 15 and over girls 50 meter backstroke. The race belongs to Madison Jondro of the Shawnee Tide. She finishes with a time of 32.1 seconds. On the boys side, we have a familiar name, Michael Johnson of the Wapak Waves. He takes hold of the backstroke, ending in first place with a time of 28.31 seconds. Now on to the girls 100 freestyle. Elizabeth Gessler of the Wapak Waves making her own waves by coming away with the top finish in one minute, 3.96 seconds. The girls' champion is the West Side Swim and Racket Club. And in the boys, we have a much closer race. Michael Johnson trying to hold on to his lead, and he does so by only a half second with a time of 58.1 seconds. The waves win first for the boys. Over at UNOH, the Lada Mixed Doubles Tournament is underway. We start in the quarterfinals. First match, it's a pair of LCC Thunderbirds advancing to the semis. Olivia Kesner and Ben Brinkman win their match 6-3-6-1. Their opponent is the tandem of Diane French and John Kidd. The defending men's city champ puts one away here. They win their quarterfinal and semifinal matches 6-1, 6-0, advancing to the championship round. On the other side of the bracket, Van Wert's Brandon Amstutz and Ada's McKenzie Wills advance to the semis, winning 6-3, 7-5. They would end up playing UNOH grad Andrea Brown and Shawnee's Isaac Hanover. Brown already took home the title for the women's doubles championship, and she will have a chance to take home one more in the finals tomorrow. Hanover and Brown winning 6-0. 6 0 in the quarters and 6 3 6 4 in the semis. Finals begin tomorrow at 10 a.m. Cynthia. All right, thanks so much. We'll be right back.